Hey everyone, it's me, the Lucky Fate Reviewer, and we're back with another of the Fate Disco Extra Master discussion videos. Sorry for the long delay, but we are finally here with Julius B. Harway. A character I argue probably got has the most development out of all the masters in Extra. Like, this is pretty much one of the big four characters of of the extra series, just because of how much he does. Didn't start out that way, but CCC kind of changed everything for a lot of characters. So, yeah. So let's just go ahead and cover the least interesting issue, thing, aka Lee and. His relationship with Julius, because I don't hate Lee, but he's not exactly a complex character. He's pretty much a martial, martial artist who, again, if you pretty much if you play, if you played up to Amer the America Singularity and Grand Order, and you've seen his, his lights itself. He's basically just like that, but a bit more bloodthirstier, I would say, as an assassin. And with Julius, he kind of more or less, you know, off... I wouldn't say slack, just more so does his own thing while his master does his own thing. And they kind of come in a bit of conflict with one another. Again, it's... it's... It's pretty much a professional relationship between the, the two of them. Whereas, you know, with Leo, be, which Gary being very devoutly loyal to Leo, and Ren and Wani with Lubu and Ku, with Ku and Lubu having like having a clear keep they care about each other thing. Julius and Lee are very much professionals, and I, the only real notable thing I can say about Assassin Lee is with a cut ending, his cut ending from Extella, where he pretty much outright tells the Ar Archimedes that while Hakuno ha well, may die on the battlefield, she's not, they're not, they aren't going to end up being killed by Assassin, because he's going to make sure that doesn't happen. Which I think was a nice touch, and he brings ends up, even brings up mentioning Julius in that ending. Bit of a shame, shame that we got we get, we end up getting a different ending entirely because I would love to see that ending. Maybe just Archimedes being fed up with this whatever timeline he's in and just opting to try and kill Hakuno and just move on, and it's at least being like, nope, that ain't happening. But. Yeah, like I said, it's if you if you play Grand Order, you know his personality. At this point, it's kind of not that complex. There's a reason why he's put into to like the battle group whenever people do parrots and whatnot, because it's just that's sort of his whole shtick. But. Like, yeah, while Lee is not really, like, Lee Schwinn and his relation with, with Julius isn't that much to talk about, Julius himself is where we're gonna, like, we go into the deep end. So, I'm gonna go through this chronologically, because you kinda need to do so when it comes to talking to Julius, because, because CCC happens, and that, um, let's just say that kind, that, that's when he kind of becomes his, a really beloved character, but you need the context of how he got there in order to fully understand that. So, I believe the earliest we see him is during the prologue, where we're playing as the other master, and he pretty much ends up taking the role of Kuzu... Sochiro, basically Medea's master. He pretty much takes up that name since the entire school environment is supposed to be a replication of the school environment of UBW or Stay Night series. And he's, you know, the assassin. He's pretty much the closest match to that. Of course, 
his real name being Julius. So I do admit that is a nice touch they had. They had pretty much him pretty much fill the role of of Kizu um Soichiro and that. So that's pretty nice. Anyways, after that, he pretty much doesn't really. I don't think he really makes another appearance anytime soon. I can't really remember, but the next notable time where we end up dealing with him is when Lee, I believe, during the the the, the pre the pre during the in, in, intermediate area between the second and third round, tries to kill Hakuno, only to fail, and Lee, being on Julius for more or less being shocked by this, Dart begins to see Hakuno as a threat. Of course, when he tries to actually deal with her, Wynn shows up to more or less stop him. The next time we end up seeing him after that would be doing the, the intermediate doing the in-between stuff of round three and round four, when we end up having to save Raina Ronnie. He's the entire reason we, in, we even end up going to do that, because he, he tries to more or less look, look into the round, the battle between the two of them. Except he can't, he can't get it to work, so he ends up leaving and runs into Hogno, but more or less just, you know, leaves him be. I guess, which of course spurs that whole incident of him, of Hakuna going to look into it, more or less seeing around and hopefully deciding to save one of them. After that, we then have round five. And oh boy, is round five basically when things start heating up when it comes to extra's plot. Because this is more or less when stuff gets start, begins to get re get revealed, and you know, out of all the masters in Extra, Julius is well to question the most terrifying because he could act because of how threatening he is. Immediately, first day of the round of ra of the round, literally has Lee try to kill your servant. That doesn't exactly work, but he does disrupt the magic circuits. From your servants, meaning you can't, they can't receive mana from Hakuno. So that's not a good thing. And the only, and I imagine if if it wasn't for the fact that Hakuno had someone like Rena running out helping them, they would have lost. But because they do, the two man, they managed to devise a plan to more or less help restore Hawk the servants' mana circuits and whatnot. And, of course, Julius ends up, you know, trying to hunt, finish, finish them all, which, of course, fails. Though it's at this point where they more or less have the whole issue of Lee, Lee being invisible, and he even devise a way to deal with that, which comes with the whole ceiling thing, three ceiling traps that ends up working on him. And I believe after that, we kind of don't get much of him ex until the, the the battle between him and Hakuno. And this is where things get really interesting, because ha this is pretty much the first time Hakuno more or less shows her, their ability, her, slash them, you know what I mean, their ability to more or less read into people and kind of break them down into figuring out how they operate. Nothing that seems to seem more like suspense upon, but it's kind of interesting. Inter interesting, inter interesting that this is more or less where it starts, because I believe this is the only this is the more or less the moment when this starts happening. Is with Julius Hawkno more or less pretty much deduces that he's not he doesn't really care about Leo, and that, Meanwhile, might she may they may not know why they more or less assume that he's kind of just he he doesn't follow Leo out of loyalty or care, and we'll actually get into this, but later. But of course, Hakuno wins, and unlike all the other opponents, 
Julius does something, pretty much causes himself to prevent his complete deletion, and manages to escape the arena, which I can only imagine is tied to his physical body, and which is more or less a failsafe to ensure that if he did get beaten, he would more or less be able to still act, at least until later one. Because here's the thing with Julius. This was more or less a one-way trip. Like, him killing the Moon Cell, him running, him helping Leah win the Grail, this was always a one-way trip. This is more or less his final mission. Ensure Leo got the Grail and, and he at least die, you know, having fulfilled this role. But, of course, since he lost to Hakuno, he can't really accept that, and so he ends up, you know, pretty much turning himself into nothing more than a ghost within the system to try and continue, you know, to fulfill his purpose. And it's during this time where he ultimately finds out the truth about Hawkno, that they're pretty much an NPC based off a person that supposedly died 30 years ago, which is, of course, isn't the full story, but it ties into the Rob 5 revelation where it re it's revealed that Hawkno isn't even a real person who got disconnected from the original, from their physical body, but is in fact an NPC that became a that, that self-actualized. Which is ironically something they found out during the whole thing with Lee and trying to restore their servants, mag magic circuits, mana supply, and whatnot. But yeah, that's more or less the last we see of Julius up until the round seven, where we're facing off against Leo. And we end up having to go through this arena that's kind of filled with Julius' memories, and we more or less learned about the full story. Leo Chili's is a designer baby, but wasn't really was more or less deemed a failure by his family, and kind of was just treated like garbage. And it's around this time where he more or less met, meets, where he more or less more or less gets to be with Al Alencia, Leo's real mom. And she's the first person to show him any sort of compassion and love and whatnot. And it's nice. But then Leo and his his and Leo's father, more or less do more or less prove his worth, tells him to go assassinate her in order to ensure Leo's inheritance. Yeah. His and Leo's father is a real freaking just word that I'm not I would like to use, but will restrain myself from using. He is a terrible person. Sean, Sean Sweet, he is a terrible person. I cannot wait for the day we find out this guy's name because I really hope like hope that which record kind of co covers it. But yeah, and it's ultimately here where we more or less prove we find out Hawkins' deduction was right because it was ultimately Alencia, who pr who as her final request, athlete asked Julius to look after Leo, which he does, which is more or less why you see why he's so dedicated to protecting Leo. It's not because out of his family; it's because of Alencia's final wish, the one person who can who showed him any sort of love and care. And of course, we end up, you know, running into Julius, who still had Lee, but now Lee is, an assa is a berserker rather than an assassin, because Julius had managed to acquire the command seals of a previous master, and that's how he st he's still around, even though he should have lost. And of course, the two, Hakuno and, Hakuno and Julius, do one more fight, and Julius is more or less dealt with for good. And this is... Probably where Hawkino you know, more or less completely lose status as a as a insert yourself character because it's really when Julius is dying, Hawkino you know, starts crying for him, and this is this of course spurs Julius to actually you know learn to admire Hawkino you know, because she here 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 is another person who has 
who's the only other person who's showing him any sort of kindness and care. Something he has not had since Alencia. And with that, he more or less dies. At least, that's what, ha what happens in Extra. Now, before we talk about CZC, we need to talk about the cut ending, because Julius, Julius, along with Leo and, and Ren in different contexts, they have cut endings. Endings that sadly didn't make it in the game, and that ending for Julius is that you could, if you didn't save Ren or Ronnie, I guess how it would work is if you, didn't, you chose not to send Ren or Ronnie, then you would end up having the chance to use your command still to save Julius. The issue here is Julius is of course aware that, you know, at least while he's appreciated, and I think he comes along with you, this was a one-way trip. He's, he doesn't have a physical body to return to. His physical body is pretty much, was pretty much being kept alive purely by machines at this point, just so he can feel his purpose, which, though I do admit, it's still kind of nice that there was a consideration for an ending for him. Which, I do wonder if Extra Record is going to make use of. And I bring Extra Record up a lot. I guess this is, this is sort of a period where we can talk about this. You see, Extra Record, more or less, when it, it was initially revealed, showed us Julius' new design. Yeah. While it fits more appropriately than Julius' old design, the jacket, the removal of the jacket is kind of a big deal, because it's like, that jacket is iconic at this point. That jacket is, you you know it belongs to Julius. So, to see it more or less get removed for a more professional look, like, it's, it's nice? But I still, I think a lot of people still prefer the old design. I just want to bring that to attention, because, mm, X director is gonna is coming out eventually, so figured out that would be a good time to bring up the, the the new design. Anyways, now we move on to CCC and the actual kind of cool part of CCC. See, when BB moved all the masters from the far the new side to the far side, they were more or less take all the defeat masters were taken right before the deaths. The thing with Julius is she he didn't exactly die after his defeat during the fifth round. He died after Haw his final co confrontation with Hakano during round seven. So the Julius we end up getting in CCC is actually post that incident. See, ha Ju Julius. Hence why he ends up being really dedicated to ha caring about Hakano. Who the point that he even, after Hakano gets flung into some dog room here, I think that's what it's called, dog room, whatever, where Hakano's more or less crawling on all fours, and forced to continue unending, and Hakano's servant has a sealed, Julius is the one who more or less breaks them out, at the cost of his own life, but he more or less, again, it's pretty much the embodiment of, Hakano was the one person to show me any sort of co any comfort and care, I think also at this. <clears throat> Hold on. Sorry, still got a little dry there. But he he's pretty much the buyer of Hawkins, the only one who showed me any sort of any any sort of care. I'm already dead, so if I have to die again, it's going to be to protect Hawkins. And he ends up doing this by you know. Faking his allegiance to BB, knocking everyone out at the at the school, and saving Hawkno from the area BB trapped or trapped him in, and allows them to go free the servant. And in Foxtail, Julius more or less protects Hawkno from Kazura initially, even and even after that, he gets like impaled on dark spikes, and Kazura takes Hawkno. Julius ends up freeing himself using the staff, because he ends, because in Foxtel he has more or less a replica of the of Domia Therion, aka the staff that BB has, and he more or less, you know, dedicates himself to getting Kaz, um, Proto, 
Team Protea in saving Hawk, in his saving in helping having her help him save Hawk now. And he's still around at this point because he Hawk now manages to ha have BB convince BB to ha at least save Julius. Though he lost more or less lost his hair in the process. Like his hair is no longer black. It's I'm going to guess it's white. I don't know. We would have we would have to get in a uh, color version of it. But suffice to say, Julius is still around. Though it's hard to say how much help he's going to be after everything that's happened. But yeah. I guess the last thing I need to bring up is Last Encore. His fight with Hawkno is more or less the same, though I guess the one difference in there is that he never had his fulfilling ending with Hawkno, since there was never a round 7. Since Ren and Roddy's round didn't happen during the 3rd, but happened during the 6th round, which meant that Lee would, would, would have had to face Hawkno during the 6th round. Doing the so, Julius never recovered fast enough to where he got that conversation with Hawkno, and thus, pretty much never got that moment with her. Ultimately leaving her to be more or less a dead face, and more or less wait for dead face Hawkno to appear during the fifth stratum, and to end up having their fight. I'm not really a big fan of Last Encore Julius, because it's... Meh? Like, really, man? They get a lot of last on cards, man. But that's beside the point. And with that, that should be all of Julius. If you can't tell, I really like his character. And he's, like I said, he's pretty much the character that goes through a lot of development throughout the events of Extra and CCC. It's just. Alongside Shinji and Alice, like Shinji and Alice are, and Gato and Yinko are, can be considered side characters and whatnot. Julius, Ren, Ronnie, and Leo are pretty much the big four when you come to when you, when we talk about Masters of Extra. They're like the big four. We like when you say Extra Masters of Extra, he's probably one of the four people that pop up in your head because he's just he left such a big impact in Extra with how like. Threatening he was, and just... Mm. And I really, really do hope they retain this in, C in the remake. And maybe... In a, and maybe not... And maybe, I don't know, give us an ending with him? Who knows? It, it's definitely a we-have-to-wait-and-see sort of thing, but I am... I'm, I really can't wait to see him. In, re in record. Though, again, I'm still heavy about his design. On the one hand, I I think it's pretty cool and more fitting, considering he's pretty much in a professional assassin. On the other, the jacket, man, the jacket, it's iconic with Julius. So just to see it co is kind of heartbreaking at the same time. But mm, who knows? We might we might end up liking this new design once we actually get it in the game. Regardless, I think that's pretty much it for Julius. Uh, I think next bit, I'm going to have to do a, con a coin flip to determine who I'm going to end up doing if I'm going to end up doing Ren or Ronnie first. Because both, char both characters are way too important to just do one video about. So, I'm probably going to have to end up doing coin flip all scream and determining which one I'm gonna end up doing. But regardless, that's it for Julius. Be sure to always give him love and care because my god this boy needs it. And yeah. See you guys next time when we talk about Ren and Ronnie. Bye.